this video, we're going to take a look at our stair by component tool here in Revit. It's new here in 2013, and I know that we have taken a look at stair by sketch, but as we kind of do some more sophisticated stair layouts um, in some of our upcoming projects, I do want you to be able to use the stair by component tool as well. Uh, it's pretty user friendly, I believe, once you get the hang of it. So let's kind of get started with laying out the stair and we'll take a look at even some things um, very similar. If I just zoom in down here to the base of the stair, how you can make some edits when you have custom treads, which we have in one of our project uh, stairs. So let's just go ahead and get started with the stair tool by component. So the first thing we're going to do here in our new project is I'm just going to come up to still architectural. We're clicking the drop down and you'll see stair by component. Now that we're in our stair by component tool, I want to focus over here on the contextual ribbon, the components panel, and you'll see there's run, landing, and support. We're going to go ahead and get started with, with the run of our stair here. So, so let's just go ahead and I'm going to zoom in so that you can see. Based on our floor to floor height, 18 risers floor to floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come out 12 risers. So we're going to come up two thirds of the height and then we're going to switch back. Um, so I'm just going to select here where we have 12 risers already created. And that's going to go ahead and give me that. And then I'm going to go ahead and focus on where the switch back occurs. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to go ahead and just give myself a the switch back and create my other six risers to get us all the way up to level two. All right. Now here's the interesting part. We went ahead and defined both of the runs and you'll see that Revit just went ahead and created the landing component that I can just select on here in my model even between those risers. In order to create the example that we looked at, I'm just going to select on my initial riser here, that riser component, and I'm going to come up here to my modify tool and I'm actually going to select on mirror to mirror this this initial run. Now I'm going to just come in here and let's zoom in and select our path. And you'll see Revit's going to give me another riser component as well. Then the next piece, because we have a single landing here kind of uh, bringing us to the point where we, where, we, where we switch back on this stair, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to just go ahead now and modify the landing that we have. So I'm going to deselect everything here and select just the landing and on the contextual ribbon when we want to move and begin to edit those components this button over here convert to sketch based is important so I'm going to click on that for our landing and Revit just gives us a message that lets us know converting our component based stair to a sketch base is irreversible so once we do this it will no longer just operate and function as a component so I'm gonna that's okay so now let's select that component once more and we can come up here to edit sketch now that we've converted it and to extend my landing I'm gonna come out here and just draw some lines they do not need to be complete we're going to trim them in place and at this point I'm just going to come back to my modify panel and let's just go ahead and trim up the extent of our landing now I'll come in here and delete this extraneous line remembering that our landing does need to be you know an enclosed loop then I'm going to actually click in here while we're before we close out of our landing modifications we have our stair path as well and I want to make sure that we create a stair path in this area so let's go ahead and just begin to start the continuation of our stair path from the other direction and we'll just go ahead and trim that as well and that'll give us the path that we were looking for the modified path based on connecting both of these stairs to the new stair that switches back. I'm going to click OK and you'll see that Revit actually goes ahead and modifies the support as well so the stringer has been modified to wrap around the landing that we have identified as well. The next piece that I want us to do is remembering that these are all still individual pieces we're able to select 
on this stair here in the middle and over my properties menu you'll see I still have an actual run width so we can go ahead and change this as well to five feet for example I'm gonna just go ahead and click apply and you'll see that now we have two individual stairs that come up to our joint landing and then switches back in the direction of the second floor level like we have in our project so let's just go ahead and create a 3d view that allows us to take a look at this come up to our quick access toolbar and there we have the stair in place Now I'm gonna come back just to my floor plan view and close out of this stair let's go back to our 3d view one more time and you'll see Revit just goes ahead and applies a railing a railing that actually works properly on both sides as I kind of just spin around from our view cube and take a look remembering that you can still click on this railing and through the properties menu whether we have a goal a glass railing type or some other railing you can go ahead and define that but I just wanted to go over kinda of how you use the stair by component tool to go ahead and create what you need here